Hello to our future WDCS grade nine students and your parents. My name is Mrs. McFarland and I'm the principal of Walkenden District Community School. I'm very excited to welcome you to grade nine at WDCS. I've been fortunate enough to be the part of the WDCS family for over a decade and I hope you'll enjoy your time here as much as I have enjoyed mine. We have a fun, safe, comfortable school with helpful and approachable staff and an accepting student body. Our school has a pathway for every student. No matter where you want to go after high school, you can get there through WDCS. WDCS opened in 2012. It brought two elementary schools, Brant Central and Walkerton Public together with Walkerton District Secondary School. It has been a very successful merger and we are very fortunate to come to a school that has a beautiful state-of-the-art facility. Our facility is also extraordinary. It includes the beautiful cafetorium where we would usually host the grade eight parent night, transportation, construction and manufacturing shops, new science labs, a triple gymnasium, art, drama and music rooms, green technology, smart boards and LCD projectors in every classroom, a weight room and more. We have over 150 computers and laptops for students, student Wi-Fi with plenty of bandwidth, lots of natural light and a great place to learn in. Some areas of WDCS are designated for secondary students only, while some areas are designated for elementary only. This combined with schedules designed to keep secondary and elementary apart provides our senior students with their own space. Please take time to use the interactive virtual tour on our website to become more familiar with our spaces of our secondary students in our school. I hope you find our virtual information night very informative. This is a list of topics that we covered tonight. If you have any questions following this presentation, don't hesitate to contact the school and we'll be happy to speak with you. I would now like to turn the presentation over to our guidance counselor, Mr. Rourke. Thanks, Mrs. McFarland. My name is Dan Rourke and I'm the guidance counselor here at Walkerton District Community School. Over the last week, I've been going out to various grade A classes around the Blue Water District School Board and the Walkerton area to make a presentation similar to the one we're making tonight, but to all of your sons and daughters in their classrooms. They should have brought home some materials, including a registration package with them if they are attending a Blue Water District School Board school. Uh, and hopefully you've heard a little bit about our school already. We're going to give you some more important information tonight. You can see the topics we're going to cover on the left hand side here. Now, normally when we do this presentation, we're in our cafeteria and we're doing a tour of the school and the information is spread out over that presentation and that that tour. So we're going to do our best to make it as interesting for you as we can and give you as much information as we can tonight. If you have any questions, concerns after this presentation, please don't hesitate to call me or email me. My contact information is at the end of this presentation. So I'd like to start by showing you our grade nine registration and orientation website. It is located on the Blue Water District School Board's Walker District Community School webpage. And you can link to it by on the front page for the school's website, clicking through these three images, the third one being grade nine registration for September of 2021. Brings you back to this page. And this page gives you instructions on how to register your son or daughter if they are a student currently at a Blue Water District School Board school and how to register your son or daughter if they are currently not at a Blue Water District School Board school. It also gives you links to hard copies of some of the information that, sorry, soft copies of some of the information that I handed out to your sons and daughters at their schools. So that includes our student transition guide for grade eight to grade nine, which is a a color booklet, which is, is a good exercise to go through it with your son or daughter. It answers a lot of questions about grade nine, about course selection, about what which level to choose, and some of the things I'm going to talk about tonight, but it's good to revisit it. There's also a how parents can help students section, which you might want to take a look at as well. The other link there to a, a soft copy of our documents is to our course calendar. And our course calendar is all text. It's not uh, not full of nice color pictures, but it does have a lot of good information, including course descriptions and course codes for every school that we offer in our school and a pretty thorough description of all the programs we offer at WDCS. So those are the two booklets that were sent home with your son or daughter if, if I made a presentation to their class. Uh, they're available at our school and they're available in PDF form on our website right here. You can also link to our registration package, our course selection when it opens up. 
There's a virtual tour of our school, which I'll show you right now. So because we can't take you on a tour of our school tonight, hopefully we can maybe in June or over the summer at some point in time. Hopefully we can get you in our building, but if we can't, uh, this is going to substitute for that tour for now, and it shows the two floors of WDCS. If you click on any one of these Riverhawk images, then it shows you a picture of that room. Again, you just close the window to get out of there and go in and check out another picture. And it just shows you the different areas of the school. So if you haven't been in our school or you just want to familiarize yourself with some of the secondary sections, that also is a good exercise to go through and do the virtual tour. I'm going to come back and refer to this a few times tonight. So our grade eight parent night and information video is going to be posted right here. Hopefully that's how you found it tonight. And also we have descriptions of our grade nine electives. So when your son or daughter is deciding which electives they want to take in grade nine, our teachers have made videos here that describe what their class is all about. So that should help them with that decision. OK, so this is our grade nine orientation and registration website. Most of the information you need to register your son or daughter at WDCS is right there. And if you have any questions about that, once again, feel free to reach out and contact me. My information is going to be made available at the end of this presentation. So now I'm going to jump back to my PowerPoint here. There we go. Right, so one of the things that WDCS has a very good reputation for is having a caring environment. And this is a quote by one of our former students, Sarah Wall, who's a university student at Wilfrid Laurier. And she says, having such approachable and caring teachers really helped me have the confidence in university to go and talk with my professors. The work ethic that I developed in high school has helped immensely in university. My writing skills that I developed with the help of the English teachers at WD really prepared me well for university. I owe a lot to these teachers. We consistently hear from our graduates how well we prepare them for college, university, apprenticeships, skilled trade, workplace, wherever they're going, whether it be into to business or science, healthcare, skilled trade. We prepare our students very well for success after graduation. We have a fun, safe, comfortable school with helpful and approachable staff. We have a very diverse population, and as a result, we have a very accepting student body. Another reason that we have earned the caring reputation has to do with supports that we have in place for our students. And this is a list of just some of those supports. So you can see, we'll start at the top here, the breakfast club. So to start the day off right, our breakfast club in a normal school year feeds about 150 students a day. So whether they didn't get enough breakfast, didn't get breakfast, uh, forgot their lunch and need to grab some food for lunch, we get around 150 students in the breakfast club every morning, grabbing some fruit, making a bagel, getting some, some cereal, whatever they need to do. Some teams go up together after their morning practice and have breakfast together. So that's just a good way to start the day at WDCS. We also have a full-time learning resource teacher and a developmental learning teacher for students who have a learning difficulty or a special need. We have one full-time guidance counselor and student success teacher who serve as academic advisors to the students. We have mental health workers who come in from outside agencies and from the Blue Water District School Board to help students with many mental health problems they may have. We have an attendance counselor, a community OPP officer. So when you see a when you see a cruiser parked out front of the school, they're not necessarily here uh, laying fines and handing out parking tickets. They're often here to create relationships and establish relationships with our students by making presentations in classrooms or just just being in the school. The MyBlueprint.ca education plan, or hopefully you'll have a chance to explore with your son or daughter. It is a software we use in our grade 10 careers class, but also in grades seven, eight and eight and other grades to plan what students want to do in high school and beyond high school. The course selection process uses myblueprint.ca to submit students course selection. And we also have connections with Keystone Child and Youth Family Services, as well as VPI Incorporated, which is the employment uh, center downtown, which helps students get part time, full time, after school, weekend, summer jobs. And we have a late bus, which is really a late taxi. So when students are staying after school for an extracurricular activity or to get help from their teacher, they can sign up in the morning for our, our late bus or late taxi, and they just put down their name, where they're going, what their activity is that they're doing after school, and then we call them a cab. It's paid for by the school. It picks them up just after five o'clock and drops them off at their doorstep. 
So speaking of extracurricular activities, uh, this is a list of the extracurricular activities that ran last year at Walker and District Community School. If you compared this list to a large high school's list of extracurricular activities, and we're a relatively small high school, around 400 students, a large high school in Ontario would be about 1,500 students. Uh, you would you would see that this list is comparable to the list at a larger school. So we have all kinds of extracurricular activities going on at WD, whether it be a, a club, something to do with the art department, like a band, a junior sport, which is for grades 9 and 10 level students, a senior sport for grade 11 and 12 students, or open, sometimes called varsity sports, which are open to any, any grade level, any athlete at any grade level. Okay, so we have lots, lots going on. And we always encourage grade nines to get involved right away when they come to high school. There's a long established relationship between participation in extracurricular activities and academic success and good mental health. It'll make your high school experience much more enjoyable and probably more successful if you can get onto a team or a club and have something to do at school besides just going to class. Now, another important point to make here is, is we love having community volunteers whenever possible in our school. But it's worth noting that every club or team on that list is run by a WDS, WDCS staff member. So that should tell you something about the type of staff we have at our school. And they're willing to give up their extra time to run that many clubs and teams before school, after school, and on weekends. Here's another quote from one of our recent graduates. Uh, Marshall Gaiman is a music student at McGill University. And Marshall says, WD was a place with a thousand opportunities in music, sports, academics, student council, you name it. It was a fantastic environment for creativity and individuality, and it's under the title, Something for Everyone. Like I said, we have a very diverse population at WDCS, and students who want to go in a lot of different directions, skilled trade, university, college, workplace. So we try to have something for everyone, and we do a pretty good job of that. This is a list of the courses we offer at WDCS. So this would include grade 9, 10, 11, and 12 courses that are offered in a classroom with a real teacher. Because we're a small school, some people might worry that we don't have enough courses, don't have the courses people need to get where they want to get to after high school, but it's important to note that no matter where you want to go after high school, you can get there through WDCS. Like I said, we have we have graduates in every imaginable pathway. We have a diverse population and we have a pathway for everyone. At WD, we offer prerequisite courses for every apprenticeship, college and university program in Canada in a classroom with a real teacher in a normal school year. Now we have more online courses being offered and more remote learning during this year, obviously because of the pandemic, but in a normal school year, while we do offer online courses and more, and more and more of them every year, they're offered to mainly grade 12 students and those grade 12 students take those courses online because they choose to, not because they need to. We offer students what they need in a classroom with a real teacher. I'd like to take a few minutes just to talk about some of the special programs we have at WDCS. Now, some of these programs you can't commit to until grade 11, but I think it's worth noting them so that you are aware of them. Some high schools in Ontario have what's called specialist high skills major programs. And at WDCS, we have four, one in agriculture, one in health and wellness, one in ICT, and one in manufacturing. So a specialist high schools major is a specialized high school diploma with a focus on one of these sectors. The specialist high schools major provides you with skills and experience through the classes you take, through field trips and guest speakers you have, so that when you go into a job interview, you maybe have an advantage, or when you make your resume, you have an advantage over other people applying for the same job because you have more experiences to talk about. For example, one valuable thing you get in a specialized skills major is a series of six or seven certifications. And these are industry grade certifications that a lot of employers and a lot of, uh, a lot of college university programs may require you to have before you begin with them. And sometimes they have to pay for them. Well, in this case, you'll show up with your resume, certifications on your resume already, paid for by WDCS. It's also going to help you make critical decisions about what you want to do after secondary school if you have some of these experiences. So just to touch on each of them briefly, our ICT program, Information Communication Technology, focuses on animation, digital photography and videography, 
computer design. Uh, the software they use is Adobe Photoshop, InDesign, and Adobe Premiere, as well as AutoCAD. Our manufacturing specialist high schools major is metal, wood, and automotive manufacturing, and it also incorporates some computer design as well. One of the most successful and best known specialist high schools major programs in the province is Chesley's specialist high schools major agriculture program. Now this takes place during your second semester of grade 12. Mr. Watson, the agriculture teacher here, has you to Chesley for one semester where you take four agriculture courses, you receive six agriculture certifications, and you do some work in their barn and in their garden and in their greenhouse as well, as well as doing a, a co-op, which is part of all the special high schools major programs. Our biggest special high schools major program is health and wellness. It covers science, so all healthcare related careers, personal fitness, foods and nutrition, and early childhood education. Okay, so as I said, part of the special high schools major program is a co-op placement, so cooperative education. Probably the best program in Ontario high schools period where you earn credits by getting on the job work experience and we have partnerships with all kinds of amazing local businesses to get students wherever they want to go. We have a student here working at Rogers TV, student here in a, a healthcare administrative role, vet clinic and doing some construction. Students who, who want to work towards a skilled trade can, if they choose and if it's in their best interest, start banking apprenticeship hours while doing their high school co-op under the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program. Co-ops are usually done in grade 12 and some also in grade 11. We have a partnership with Bruce Power where we have co-op placements at Bruce Power. A couple students every year take advantage of that. There is a, a travel allowance, a transportation allowance paid for, mileage is paid for by Bruce Power. And Georgian College, we have a partnership with Georgian College in Owen Sound where students take dual credits. The term dual credit means for taking the course or courses, the student gets a credit towards their high school diploma, but also towards an Ontario college certificate or diploma at any Ontario college. These courses are free. They're offered in the evening or some courses you actually go to for a full semester at Georgian College and, and take um, and spend your entire semester at Georgian College. So various fields, we have those programs in. And like I said, those programs are mainly offered in grade 11 and 12, really only offered in grade 11 and 12, but it's important you know about them now. One program we have that is offered in grade nine through 12 is the Walker and Exceptional Athlete Training Program. So this program provides students with a chance to get a hard workout in every single day. It's a very serious personal fitness class. It's If you're not a self-motivated hard worker when it comes to, to doing exercise and phys ed, then it's definitely not for you. But what we found was we had many students who wanted to go on and play sport after secondary school, either for a national team, for a provincial team, for college or university, and they had a hard time fitting in the type of workout they need to become an elite athlete. They had homework after school, they want to hang out with their friends, they've got a part-time job, they've got class all day, and they've got practices with their team. So we put this in the middle of the day for them, made it a phys ed credit, and they get a, a hardcore workout every single day. That's called the WEAT or the Walker and Exceptional Athlete Training Program. Another program we have that is specifically for grade nines is our Link Crew Program. So our Link Crew Program is an orientation for grade nines put on by teachers, and a few grade 10, 11, and 12 students, about 15 grade 10, 11, and 12 students who act as mentors. So it's important to know our orientation is on the first day of school in September. It is grade nines only and the teachers and the, the peer mentors. It's not during summer vacation. Some local schools have their orientation in the middle of the summer, in the middle of August, and they take a day of your vacation. We do ours on the first day of school in September. Now, this is not something we made up, Link Crew. Uh, it is a, a, a renowned orientation program. Hundreds of schools across North America use this program. We have our teachers trained in it and it's been very successful for it. What, it's, it's a small group, sorry, high energy assembly followed by some small group activities. We find that it decreases anxiety in grade nines. They get to meet the rest of their class. If they don't already know them. They get to meet some grade 10, 11 and 12 students who will act as peer mentors and leaders for them throughout secondary school. It gives them a sense of belonging, and just gives them a positive fun start to high school. They get to go around to their locker, figure out how to open their locker, have trouble with it, go to try and get to class, get lost, and they get to do all those things without all the grade 10, 11, and 12s in the school. It's just grade nines and people helping them out. So it's a good way to start secondary school. So those are some of the programs that we offer in grades nine through 12 at WDCS. 
now I'd just like to take the time to speak a bit about diploma requirements, course selection, course offerings at WDCS. So most students in Ontario are working towards an Ontario secondary school diploma. We do have some students in our developmental learning program who work towards what's called an Ontario secondary school certificate or a certificate of accomplishment, but almost all of our students are working towards the OSSD Ontario secondary school diploma. So I just want to go over with you quickly right now what it takes to get an OSSD. To explain on this card right here, but it's a little small, so I'm going to blow it up here for you and look at the top half. So the first thing that you need to do to get an Ontario Secondary School Diploma is obtain 18 compulsory credits, and they are listed right here. Now, you see it says four English, three math, etc. Three math would indicate you only need to take three maths in secondary school, not one in grade 12. So we always recommend the students take a grade 12 math because a lot of employers, many university and college programs require you to have a grade 12 math. So we definitely tell students to take that fourth math, although it's not a requirement to graduate. At the bottom, you might have your attention drawn to these 2.5 credits. We have a class in grade nine where half the semester is spent learning about government, which is civics, and half is spent in my blueprint learning. It's called career studies. You learn about, uh, you do self-assessment, you explore what you may want to do beyond secondary school and for the rest of, of high school. So half a credit for each of those. So that actually only adds up to 15 but we said there were 18 compulsory credits. So the other three are actually selected from these different groups. So you have to pick one from each of these groups. Now, usually as students choose their electives in grades nine, 10 and 11, they just by accident satisfy these group requirements. If not, we make sure they get one of them in grade 12. For instance, if you take a co-op in grade 11 or 12, a two credit co-op, co-op can count as two of these groups, okay, any, any two. So it's actually pretty easy. And like I said, students satisfy those groups by accident. That is your 18, those are, I should say, your 18 compulsory credits. So what else do you need to do to graduate? Well, you need 12 optional credits as well. And that takes you to the 30 credit total that you need to graduate, 18 compulsory and 12 optional credits. Now, one of the advantages we have at WDCS over Catholic high schools in Ontario is we don't force you to take religion four times throughout high school. So in Catholic schools, you only get eight optional credits. At our school, you get 12. So that flexibility with those extra four optional credits can be very important. It can allow you to get the courses that you want to take and need to take for college and university without having to work them around for other compulsory credits. You also need 40 hours of community involvement. Now that could change. The 40 hours could change because of COVID-19. It may come down to 30 or 20, or they may waive them. We'll have to just see where that goes. Last year, they did waive those 40 hours for the graduates because of COVID-19. And the last thing you have to do to graduate is pass the provincial literacy test or literacy requirement, as it says on the form there. So the literacy test is a pretty formal EQAO test written in grade 10, written on the same day, the same time by every grade 10 student in Ontario. If you, you're sick that day or away that day, you gotta wait till the next year to write it and you have to pass it to graduate. So there's a bit of stress around it because it's so formal and because you have to pass it to graduate, but it's important to note that no one has ever not been able to graduate from WDCS because they didn't meet the literacy requirements. If you fail it the first time, you write it again the next year. And if you fail it again, you take a course in grade 12 called the Ontario Literacy Course. And when you pass that course, you meet the literacy requirements. Okay, so those are the, the requirements to get the Ontario Secondary School Diploma in Ontario. 30 credits, 18 compulsory, 12 optional, 40 hours of community service, and successful completion of the literacy requirement. So let's simplify that and just look at what you need in grade 12, sorry, in grade nine, as far as courses go, because that's a lot of credits, a lot of information. Let's just break it down to just grade nine. So in grade nine, there are six compulsory credits, English, math, science, geography, French, and healthy active living, which is our fancy way of saying phys ed. Okay, so each student has to take those six classes. That adds up to six, but at WDCS, as in most schools in Ontario, we are semestered in a normal school year. So students take eight classes in a year, four in the first semester, four in the second semester. So to get to eight classes, we need two optional credits there. And the credits that people can choose from, students can choose from are visual art, music, information technology and business, which is a computer class, exploring technologies, which is our shop class. So I'm just going to take a brief second to talk about each of those, but also we allow students to choose from two grade 10 credits if they'd like to, 
in grade nine. So these are courses we can offer in grade nine or grade 10. We offer them in grade 10, so we allow grade nines to take them. And there are always several grade nines in each of these classes. They are foods and nutrition and drama. So I'm just going to jump out of this slideshow for one second and go back to our school's website. There we go. So I'm back now on that grade nine registration page. And remember, if you want a more detailed description of these elective credits, there are videos at the bottom of this page where each one is described by the teacher who will be teaching that class. But I'm going to jump into the virtual tour again and just show you each of those electives by looking at the rooms they are in. So we'll start on the second floor here with the art room. So art is visual art, so painting, sketching, sculpturing. There is a Native Canadian theme that goes along with the grade nine class. You can see here some Native Canadian art. They make clay totem poles, I believe, at one point as well. Uh, if we keep moving here, the other elective that is on the second floor is foods and nutrition. So in grade 10, the foods and nutrition class focuses on baking. OK, and one of the really popular things, as Ms. Bougia will tell you about our foods class, which is one of the most popular classes in the school, is that they cook in that class four or five days of the week. OK, they're not just sitting down making a PowerPoint about how to cook soup. They're actually making the soup. OK. And if you like what you cook, you get to eat it. So that's a good deal. Back to the first floor now. So if we start with the music room right here. So yeah, so the music room, instrumental music. This semester we're doing guitar because we can't use the wind instruments, but hopefully next year we're back to normal. We have all kinds of brass, woodwind, percussion instruments, and a concert band to go along with that class. Drama takes place right here. You can see they have some lighting in here and some risers to make a stage and stairs that go to our main stage right there. So they do all kinds of fun, small and small drama games and also do larger productions as well. Continuing around the main floor, our shop class, Exploring Technologies, gives students a sample of each of our three shops. So transportation tech, uh, where they work on large engines like this tractor engine, but they also work on small engines as well as cars. In grade nine, you're basically learning basic automotive maintenance, how to change a tire, how to change your oil. We have two lifts in there. Uh, some cars we work on are old beaters. Some are actually on the road and are gonna drive home later on that night. After spending about 22 days in there, you slide over to the manufacturing class, learn how to weld and work with metal on some machines. And there's the metal shop and Lastly, you can finish up in construction in our wood shop, where you use hand tools to learn some basics of carpentry and woodworking. OK, so that is. The exploring technologies, one of the most popular grade nine classes where you spend about 22 days in each of our shops. Another elective takes place in our. Computer lab room 113. So it, Information Technology and Business is a computer class where you learn how to be an expert in Office 365, so formerly called Microsoft Office, so Excel, PowerPoint, Word, etc. We have quite an extensive number of apps added to that now in Microsoft. And also you'll get a taste of the senior computer classes we have at WDCS. So you might do a little bit of coding, might do some animation, some photography, just so you can help decide, help you decide what you want to take when you're done grade nine and going on to grade 10, 11, and 12. So those are the electives that you can choose from in grade nine. To recap them, we have the two grade 10 courses you can choose from, foods, nutrition, or drama, as well as visual art, music, information technology and business, which is the computer class, and exploring technologies. So that is one of the decisions that you have to make with your son or daughter around grade nine course selection. Which electives are you going to choose? The second decision you have to make involves what pathway or what level they're going to study at. So in secondary school now in Ontario, we divide grade nine and 10 courses into three different streams or pathways, academic, applied, and locally developed. Now, when many of us were in high school, these were referred to as advanced, general, and basic level programs. Okay, now they've changed, they've changed the names for grade nine and 10. And when you move into grade 11 and 12, they change again. So academic 
stream of the academic pathway lines up with university prep courses. Applied level courses align with college prep courses in grades 11 and 12 and locally developed courses align with workplace level courses in grades 11 and 12. So you can see how the names change in grade 11 and 12. The names of the pathways change to align with your destination after secondary school. Now, if you take academic courses in grade 9 and 10, that does give you the most flexibility. You can take university level courses in grade 11, 12, but also any other level of course you would like you'd like to take. If you take applied level courses in grade 9 and 10, you take college level courses or workplace level courses in grade 11 and 12, but you cannot take university level courses. So you can see how Depending on the level you take, you are opening and closing some doorways. So we need to talk a little bit about how you're going to make this decision because it's a big decision for, for some people. So three things we tell people to take into consideration when they are making this decision. One, your ability. Two, your goals. And three, your work ethic. So if we talk about ability for a second, we use these marks as basically a guideline as to whether you would be a good fit for academic, 70% or higher in grade eight, applied 60 to 70% range in grade eight, or locally developed less than 60% in grade eight. That's a pretty basic guideline we use, but it holds up to be true quite often. You can use your current ability, your current grades to decide what level that you should go into. Second is your goals. And I just kind of explained how the path pathways, the levels lead to destinations beyond secondary school. Not too many grade eight students are going to know what they want to do after secondary school right now, and those who do are probably going to change their mind. So it's really difficult to use this, your goal, your end goal. As make, in making this decision, but. It's important to know that you do open or close some doorways based on what level you take. So taking your ability into account and taking how those those levels you choose open or close doorways can help you make the decision as well. OK, and last. And most importantly, your work habits. So this table shows us the work habits required for success at each of the three levels. I'm going to take just a second to read through them. So at the academic level, and you can see if you think this sounds like your son or your daughter, a student who's going to be successful at the academic level works independently and in a focused manner. They persevere when challenged, and they have good synthesis, synthesis skills, which means they don't need a whole lot of review of previous year or previous unit before they start the current year or the current year. They can just jump right in and they're they're going pretty well. Uh, the last bullet here is the most important one and I'm going to add to it a little bit. Completes homework consistently and thoroughly, hands assignments in on time, and studies for tests. Okay, You have to do those things if you are going to be successful at the academic level. Let's take a look at this applied level description and see if this is a a description of your son or daughter works in a focused manner, but not always independently likes to work in groups or with a partner more so than alone. Applies new learning to tasks, but does require a bit of review of a previous unit or a previous year and needs assistance to organize and complete homework to remember when tests are when assignments are due, etc. Not nearly as much homework. And applied as in academic and more more hands on and applied than in academic, not to say there's not any hands on work in academic. Uh, ac academic is definitely more theory based, but still has some hands on. OK, so locally developed, if we read through that, works in a, a focused manner when prompted, applies new learning to tasks that have been directly modeled for them before that specific lesson on that specific day, completes multi step tasks when presented with scaffolding and chunking. So they do have some learning difficulty that requires some special strategies. OK, so you can decide which of those. Best describes your son or daughter. This is the like I said, the most important indicator as which level they should be studying at. If your son or daughter is really sound like an applied level student right now, but they, you think you'd like to keep doors open for them, so you want them to take academic level in grade nine, make sure they start using these work habits immediately because they won't just show up in September and flip a switch and, and start being academic if they've been applied for the last couple of years. OK, so they need to make those changes right now because they are habits that are ingrained in them. OK, so those are the two decisions you have to make. When choosing your courses for grade nine, what level are you going to study at? What electives are you going to take? So our course selection. Is going to be done two ways this year, uh, one 
online with the myblueprint.ca education planner. The grade eight teachers will be going through that with the Blue Water District School Board students in their classes uh, to do several activities, but one of them being their course selection and that will be submitted with the push of a button. But we're also going to do a paper copy as well. So your son or daughter may have brought home a registration package already. If not, you can call the school. We'll be happy to send one to you. Part of that registration package is a course selection form. There are two copies in the back. One is white and one is blue. The blue copy is the good copy that you will submit with the course selection uh, and registration package to your grade eight teacher or return to the school. Uh, and the white copy is just a rough copy for you to work with. So the way the course selection works, they put their name on the top uh, with the school they're currently going to. They indicate either academic, applied, or locally developed stream for English or science by putting an X in the appropriate box. They indicate either the academic or applied stream for geography and French by putting an X in the appropriate box. They indicate which math they would like to take, either the locally developed math or the open math. Now this is new this year in Ontario, next year rather in Ontario. For the first time, we won't be offering academic and applied level math in grade nine. We'll be opening, offering an open class and that is true across Ontario. In grade 10, students will then choose academic or applied. So for math, they will either choose the open level if they are an academic or applied level math student or the locally developed level. And the last compulsory course they need to choose is phys ed. They can choose regular phys ed, which is playing different sports. Of course, there's a health component an exercise or the personal fitness class, the week program by putting an X in the appropriate box. There is a separate application that your grade eight teacher will have or that we can email to you for the weed application, which involves a reference from a coach. So those are the six compulsory courses and how you select them in grade nine. On the bottom of that page, you also indicate which optional courses you would like to take. And remember, they are visual art, computers or introduction to information technology and business, drama, music, exploring technologies, which is the introduction to our shops, and food and nutrition. You indicate which two you would like to take by putting a one beside your first choice and a two beside your check second choice. We also ask that you put a three beside your third choice just in case classes fill up. Usually grade nine students get the courses they want to. Last year, 75 of the 78 grade nines did get their first two choices, but we do ask you to put a third choice there just to help us in case classes do fill up. Some students are exempt from taking French in grade nine, and if they are, the learning strategies class, which is a support period and a homework period that you get a credit for, help students with organization and getting assignments done in other classes, uh, is usually the substitute. So if you're not taking French, you would just put an X right there. If your student is part of the developmental learning program, you can indicate how many sections of developmental learning you would like them to have by putting the appropriate number right here. OK, so that is how you complete the course selection form. When we get those back, we start building our timetable for next year. And when we get that done, usually by the end of June, we can send out a timetable to your son or daughter, which looks like this. Now this this timetable shows quadmesters on it. Hopefully next year yours will show semesters on it. It shows the course code, the name of the course, the teacher, and the classroom right over here. So you can use that to help find your way around the school. Okay. So if we look now at the important dates coming up over the last week, I was going around to grade eight classes making presentations. Tonight is the, the grade eight virtual parents night. And by Friday, February 26th, that's the first really important date. We ask that you have your registration packages with the course selection form completed and returned to your grade eight teacher if you're at a Blue Water District School Board school by February 26th. If you're not at a Blue Water District School Board school, please return the registration package to the WDCS main office. You can just come to the school, ring the doorbell, and someone will come and meet you at the front door and get the registration package from you. On Friday, May 7th, we do a virtual call with each of the grade A teachers and talk about each of their students individually to try and find out from them exactly what we can do to help support that student while they're at WDCS. And then on Tuesday, February 7th, first day of school for grade nines at WDCS next year, it's going to happen, be here before we know it. it, will be our link crew orientation. They will, your son or daughter will get a phone call from their link crew leader the day or a couple days before that, reminding them first day of school is grade nines only and exactly wh where to show up, where to report to, etc. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us for our virtual, first ever virtual uh, grade eight parent night. 
to get your son or daughter prepared for grade nine. If you have any questions at all, my contact information is right there on the screen. Feel free to call me or email me. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And I'm happy to answer any of your questions. I look forward to meeting you all in person. Thank you again for joining us.